right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. Today we're going to take a look uh, a little bit at loop and twirl motion by our receivers to kind of dictate some pictures, maybe to dictate the rotation, change the numbers up for us a little bit, see if we can make it uh, simple on the quarterback based on the pictures and based on what they see off the motion. So, yes, the motion will change the picture, but we're hoping that uh, through teaching the quarterback using those motions each week, uh, we're hoping that he can dictate when the picture changes what we'd like to do with the football and then what we'd like to do in the run game and how that changes when we change numbers. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, Dome Hats, the headwear company we use at my high school and with PlayFest. This is my most recent high school hat, trucker fit, all right, orange and black, snapback. All right, we absolutely love it. They do great work with completely customizable hats, so check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods company we use for our uniforms, uh, spirit packs, player gear, coach gear, fan gear, shirts like this. All come from Pinkers Sporting Goods, so check them out. Just play football. All right, if you're looking for the best play drawing tool on the market, all right, it's what I use when I'm going to do webinars or speak at clinics or do anything for my Patreon site. I always draw with Just Play Football. Game Strat, sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, make sure you check out Game Strat. Customer friendly, great customer service, awesome guys. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without you know, needing a partner. Uh, work on striking in season, off season. It's a great tool to help. One of the things we're struggling with right now defensively is we're not striking well enough. We're kind of running around blocks and trying to make plays, penetrating, and we're not separating and defeating blocks. So we need to do a bunch of work on that striking machine. High and tight ball security training aid. You have to hold the ball in the proper position. If you do not have the ball in the proper position with the proper points of pressure, you don't hear the beat. So you get an instant, immediate auditory feedback for players. So we absolutely love it. Stand Perfect, which is a training aid that we use with our younger players when they come in early in the season. We'll use it in the spring a bunch. We'll use it in the summer. And then early in the season, get kids in the stances you want. You put them on the ground. Their feet go right in them. So when you have linemen on the left side, you want a, a left foot stagger. You don't have to say heel toe. You don't have to say instep. You don't have to say six inch, four inch. You don't have to move their feet. You put them on the ground. That's what it feels like to be in a left hand stance. Get used to it. That's what it feels like to be in a right hand stance. You can do it with receivers. You can use it for baseball, softball, golf. It's got unlimited uses, so make sure you check out Stand Perfect. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're talking about loop twirl motion, what are we talking about? All right, so for us, loop motion is when a receiver is going to come back into the backfield. Some people call it orbit motion, and he's going to continue on the same path. All right, so what you're doing is you're really creating a two back set or you're creating a trip set once the motion continues on. So. When we do some of our two-back stuff, we like to explain it to our guys. Once he loops back, he's in the same spot he'd be if we had a second tail back in. All right, when we like to do our 10 personnel stuff and we want to get him to the front side, we tell him that, hey, you become the number three receiver on the front side. So when, when you motion and you motion into the backfield and continue on, you become the number three receiver on that side. So what are we trying to see? We're trying to see how the defense adjusts, all right? Does the box adjust? Does the wheel bump back in? Safety come down, all right? Does the front side safety spin down to create numbers? Those are all the things that we are looking at. If we're going to get a front side safety spin, then we're going to get a back side safety spin to the middle usually. So now we are trying to teach the quarterback, if you get those front side rotations, we may want to go back side to our access throws. If you get those front side rotations, we like all right, our run game going back to the weak side because they're eliminating a support player. If they bump back into the box and they rotate down, all right, then we like staying on the front side. So we like staying where our numbers are. So we'll do this and we'll just carry our normal offensive play calls and then we'll add into it the ability to either run triple option if we read it or the ability to throw some type of flat screen or key screen to the receiver. So for instance, for us, if we were to run GT counter, all right, for us, we would run GT counter back this way where we pull and pull and we run GT counter to the tailback. Once we bring this loop motion, we now have the ability to make that a triple option where the quarterback can read off the edge key and then pitch off the apex or force defender or we have the ability to run what we call slice where we read the end and if the end chases, we throw the ball to the loop player because now we can block the perimeter because we're throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Okay, so we can get into our base run game where we run counter that way, all right, depending on the front, where they set the three, what we want to do, we can run 
Um, we can run our tackle wrap stuff, so we can, if we were running tackle wrap to this box, we can double a nose and try and get to the mic. We'd have to be big on big, three and a five, so you don't love it as much to the three and a five, then you would pull and wrap up on that wheel. All right, so a lot of times if we're getting a, a bump back into the box, we may go with tackle wrap, depending on what the weak safety does. All right, our tackle that we pull is our best player. He's got 30 power five offers, six foot four, 285 pounds, and can run. So we like schemes that use him. So we can use the dart scheme and run the same triple, the same slice, all right, within our run game. We can run GT counter, all right? You could obviously run any of your zone theories, all right, where you are working inside zone and make all the same reads off the end. So obviously you can stay with your zone, uh, your zone schemes. We will throw now screens, all right? So we'll bring that player across. Okay, we'll take the protection and we'll work it to this side here. We'll take the back and bring them across the back side, and we can now throw our now screens out there. So now we know we're going to throw, if we don't get any rotation at all on the front side, if they don't change numbers at all, all right, on the front side, we can throw it immediately to that loop player right now and put an athlete in space, all right, so we can work on our now screen stuff. Coming off the nows, we have a screen that we throw to the tailback, so we can throw a slow screen. All right, to the tailback, so now off the, off the slow screen, we can go loop motion, quarterback, look at the now screen, reset your feet, tailback come across, slam the edge and release. We go inside here and back out, back out. We can crack and go to the corner and go to the wheel. We can block, depending on how we like it or what we like that week, we can leave the corner on and we can get the tackle to the wheel all right, and then probably try to clean up the mic and leave the safety unblocked. If the mic's the guy that wants to leave with the motion, we might be able to get the guard up on the safety. Okay, so we can do it a couple different ways. All right, but the idea is trying to keep things the same picture for our kids. Same play, change the picture for the defense. All right, so you're bringing that guy in motion. So you're bringing that loop motion there. You've thrown the now screen already. Now off the now screen, you come back and you throw... The, the slow screen to the tailback on the back side, which is a play that we already throw. All right, so we, we don't have to change. The motion is the only thing that gets called. Other than that, we make the same screen call, and the kids know how to execute that screen. All right, after you throw that, all right, we can go with the now and goes, okay, or the fox screens, however you want to look at that. We can go with the now and goes of the fox screen. So once we've looped that guy out there and thrown him the ball, if they have to work to adjust if they have to, if they are coming up hard, all right, to force that, we can now keep those guys a little bit honest by throwing the pump screen, all right, the fox screen, however you want to look at that, okay, uh, based on how they handle, all right, based on how they handle the motion now, once this guy gets out here, he's number three, we can run our normal passing concept, so you got snag flat, uh, snag corner, flat, right, Simple passing concept doesn't change. Okay, we can go flood. So now we've got vertical sail, flat route. Doesn't change within our offense. All right, we do all those things all the time anyways. We can go spot, curl, flat. All right, doesn't change anything in our offense. All right, so we can do all the things we want in the passing game, all right, with the loop motion. So it really doesn't change anything in our offense. And what it does is it gives us a way to either Add a number to the front side if there's no rotation. If there is rotation, it gives us runs back to the back side. If there's rotation, we can get our best receiver one-on-one. -on -one. Our X receiver is our best receiver, so when we loop away from him, we can get him one-on-one -on -one if they're heavy rotated towards the loop side. So it gives us the ability to have some easy answers based on the motion and how teams handle it. The only difference game planning is if you don't see a lot of it, you won't know until the game how they adjust a certain motion. So now... You have to see it early, call it early, and understand how that team is going to work, all right, within their rotation so that you understand what you need to be doing that week. All right, now if you see, uh, obviously if you see teams that you know how they handle that motion because you've seen it on film, obviously that makes it easier. All right, so now we'll also do it out of, twi out of trip, sorry, and we'll go uh, with the twirl motion. So what twirl means... 
Twirl means we're going to take that receiver and we're going to orbit or loop him, depending on what your terminology is. We're going to orbit or loop him, but then we're going to send him back. Okay, so we're going to take that receiver inside, just like the loop motion, but then we're going to send him back to the same side he came from. Okay, so again, if we were to run GT counter, all right, now reading off that end, we can bring him back and we can go triple. We can bring him back and we can go slice. We can bring him back and throw him the now screen based on the rotations. All right, if they rotate to the front side or if they spin safeties, we can bring him back and throw him the ball. All right, we can bring him back and throw the slow screen to the tailback the same way we did. We can bring him back and recreate trips and have all the same passing concepts. All right, so snag, flood, curl spot, whatever's in your passing game, you can twirl him, all right, where you bring him here and you bring him back to the same side, and now you've recreated that three by one. You're trying to take a look at how they handle, all right, that motion. You're trying to see if you get a hard spin on that motion. Now when they spin, you bring them back. It's tough for them to spin again. So you're just trying to change the presentation of what you're doing. You're just trying to change how you run some of your base plays. Obviously, you can get as fancy as you want, and you can add plays. All right, you can add plays in uh, to this type of deal. You could possibly off a of loop stuff, depending on how they play. All right, you could go with the loop motion here, and then you could go triple with the shovel. You could bring the back in. All right, maybe you block it. Let's say you block power read. Let's say you block power read here, and you block back double a three to the mic, hinge the B gap here, put him up on the will. Now you're going to read the end. The loop player keeps coming as the outside component. Quarterback attacks and squeezes. We put the ball in the hands of the outside component. All right, ends wide. We shovel and follow the guard up inside. You can get as fancy as you want with that stuff based on your terminology, your players, what you think you can get accomplished. All right, but it's a good way to stay within your base offense. All right, it's a good way to stay within your base offense. It's a good way to kind of get a handle for how the defense rotates the certain motions. If you can get them to rotate the way you want them, like I said, three by one, we love the fact that our X is by himself, so if we can give them enough eye candy with the twirls and the loop and, and the three by one stuff, we can get our X matched up. If they borrow the backside safety over, we can get our X one on one. All right, so we can do anything we want to do, all right, within our 10 personnel stuff, all right, the simplicity of what we're doing within our 10 personnel stuff, it can be done once the kids understand, we're just changing the presentation, we're not changing the plays. So when we change the presentation, we're trying to change the look for the defense, but we're not trying to change what we do on offense. So a big part on offense for me is always trying to keep the same plays, keep everything the same as, but change the presentation or the looks a little bit. Sometimes in our offense, because we're so RPO based, uh, we get a little bit stagnant with formations, we don't change formations enough, we don't use enough trades and shifts and things like that. We trade the tight end a little bit. Uh, we try to jog the tailback a little bit. But it's not something we major in. We don't have a lot of formations. We don't use a lot of formations. That's just not my style of football, how I plan and how my brain works and how I attack. So sometimes the, the loop motion and the twirl motion just gives a little bit different picture to the offense to get them off of what we do out of those sets and get them to start thinking more about the eye candy and what they have to look at. All right, so it's a good way for us to change the picture, change the presentation, stay within our base offense, um, keep things the same for our kids so that when we run the plays, you're running all the same plays. So it's really not a new insult. It's, you know, you're going to, we, we, when we do things like this, we look at it as a new install for the kids. But then as we're doing it, we explain it to them and we say, guys, we're really not installing any new plays. We're just installing a new presentation of the plays that we already run. And then once they get comfortable, they're able to look at it and go, yeah, coach, once I loop here, I'm number three, passing game is normal. Once I twirl back, all right, I'm number three, passing game is normal. Now threes or now screens go to me, fox screens or pump screens. I'm the, you know, I'm the bait, I'm the eye candy, and then we're trying to go over their head to other people. So, you know, this type of motion is very good to help dictate what the defense is doing, what their rotations are, how they do certain things, all right? It's easy to get your quarterback to kind of get a beat on how they're rotating. Strong rotations, we want to run the ball weak or throw it to our X, all right? If they don't rotate at all and they give us numbers, we want to go back to our numbers on that side. So 
uh, loop twirl motion is a real easy way, especially as a 10 personnel team. You could do it as an 11 personnel team. We could do it same way out of our 11 personnel stuff, 2x2 two two and 3x1. Uh, it doesn't change the loop player. We kind of keep consistent. It's the H-back for us, uh, the slot, the weak side slot, or the trip side slot. Um, so we can do it very easily out of our 11 personnel, and nothing would change for us. We like doing it a little bit more out of 10. We like trying to spread the field. Uh, we like trying to get a lighter box if we can. Um, we like trying to get our guys in space so that if you don't honor what we're doing to the field, we will get the ball out to our guys in space. So you know, a lot of different reasons. You would do it, you would want to do it, all right? But loop and twirl motion, especially out of 10 personnel, I think can be a very effective way to change the numbers up a little bit, change the presentation up to the defense a little bit, get the ball where you need it in space, and also stay with your base run game and not fool with your offensive linemen. Um, the only thing you got to get your offensive linemen used to is when you're using loop and twirl motion, you got to hold your water a little bit longer, all right? Because now we've got to account for the motion to get where it needs to be. Uh, so the linemen have to understand that you can't go on the same cadence that you're, you're used to going on. Offensive linemen get used to going on ready, set, go, ready, set, go, but so does the defense. So we've got to be able to change some things up. So when we're using loop and twirl, we've got to tell the old linemen to hold their water a little bit. So that's something that you need to work on. So hopefully um, your season is going well. Hopefully you've got a couple games left. Uh, if your season is going to the end, hopefully you've made the playoffs or you have a chance to make the playoffs. I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. I appreciate um, what you do for me. Remember, if you are not a subscriber, click that subscribe button, turn the notifications on so you know every time we do a video or if I go on YouTube Live, you get a notification. Remember to use the comments. I, re I respond to every comment, positive or negative. Uh, if it's negative, it's usually just your opinion. Your opinion is welcome. It's what makes the world great, our world that we live in. It makes our country great. It makes this platform great. If it's a non-football deal and you're just trying to take shots at something else and I don't respond, but if it's a football deal, even if it's negative, I'll respond and say, hey, I appreciate your opinion. Thanks for watching. We do it this way for this reason. If you have a comment that you want about a video that you want us to do and I can do it, I will try to do it. All right, so make sure you're hitting those or using those comments down there because I try to respond as much as I can. Thumbs up or thumbs down kind of lets me know if you like the material, if you like the way I present it. Uh, it just gives me a better idea of what videos you guys actually like, what videos you don't like. So negative comments, thumbs down, none of those things bother me. That's what the platform's about. If you're going to do videos like this or if you're going to put your opinion or yourself out there as a coach in this public uh, setting uh, on YouTube, then you have to have the ability in the thick skin to accept uh, thumbs down and, and negative comments. So I appreciate all the interactions with the video. Remember, you won't play fast. Uh, you won't play well until you play fast, and that won't be edited because I do not edit any of these videos. So remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.